turn any time. If you want to know if you're okay, cut the throttle off and see if you have to turn before you can lose altitude. If you have to turn your airplane before you can lose altitude, you're in trouble. You must be able to turn at any time while losing altitude if you're flying in this country. So many people say, well, I can lose altitude, you know, right over there. Well, you're not there yet. What happens when you come down? Like, then you can't turn. The real problems of mountain flying have always been caused by a guy flying into a condition that he couldn't fly out of. It's not because the winds blew him into the mountain. It isn't because the turbulence pushed him into the mountain. It's because he flew into the mountain because he couldn't do anything else. Fourteen airplanes on both sides of Monarch Pass are explicit evidence of the fact they couldn't do anything else. Now this is the kind of country that people fly out here to see. The mountain country is spectacular in beauty. It's a wonderful thing to fly around and look at. Fascinating as all get out. But the pilot's got to remember not to get carried away with sightseeing and fly the airplane into a place he can't fly out of. You've got to keep your mind on what you're doing and watch where you're going. Really careful in this kind of country because you can get trapped in a hurry. Flying up one of these five canyons is a real dangerous thing. There's a lot of these canyons. There's only one way to go, and that is down and out the open end. It's a good idea to take a look at a tight box canyon before you go down it even. There can be wires and cables stretched across that you can't see. So you take a good look and then fly down and out the open end. That's the only way to go. A forced landing in a spot like this is going to give you very little time to select and make an approach to a spot that you can survive. So you've got to do it fast and you've got to do it right. And the best way is to have a spot in mind at all times when you're flying in this kind of country. Then when it does happen, you're ready for it. Any suitable spot with a normal approach means you can probably survive. But if you hit in a turn or you hit out of control, you probably will not survive. trying to prevent people from having accidents in the first place, but assuming that we're not going to be 100% successful, uh, there's got to be some way we can get the word out to people how important it is to pre-plan things. The pilot discipline that's necessary to survive in any kind of flying, but particularly in adverse uh, flying conditions like the mountains. It's just like a good pre-flight or a filing a flight plan. The pilots who use all the preventative measures that they have available to them are the, usually the last ones you ever have to go out and look for. One of the things that people that are not from this area don't realize is that it's easy to freeze to death in the middle of summer here at extreme altitude if you have to spend a night or two at 14,000 feet on any of the higher peaks. The people should dress according to the terrain they're flying over and the conditions they're flying through rather than uh, how good the heater is in the cabin of the airplane. At least if they're not dressed that way, they should have it very close to them so that they can reach it from their seat. Every experienced mountain pilot I know carries plenty of survival equipment on board their aircraft. Items such as the bedroll here and the space blankets, first aid equipment, survival equipment, smoke flares and uh, very pistols, uh, utility equipment such as knives, a um, pair of pliers, survival rifle, a 22 uh, rifle that floats with 200 rounds of ammunition, approximately two weeks of food, more utility equipment, uh, banners, uh, signaling banners and so on. All right, all of this equipment will fit in this backpack. It weighs 34 pounds. The important thing to remember is, whether it's large or small, you need to carry survival equipment. It's a real good idea when you're landing at an unfamiliar mountain airport to make a pass over the field, not only to take a look at the airport surface, but to check the terrain on both ends to see what you're faced with in case of a go-around. There are many mountain airports that there's only one way in and one way out, regardless of the wind, and you really want to know what you're going to be faced with. So a pass over the field, if you're unfamiliar, is a real good life insurance policy. 
It's a common mistake when approaching a mountain airport to approach at too high an airspeed. Normal airspeed should be used, although that will result in a faster ground speed. The apparent speed will be much greater, but normal airspeed should be used. So come in at a normal high approach, reduce the power as you approach, use your flaps as needed, and keep that airspeed normal. We're approaching Gunnison Airport at the right angle, at the right speed, and this will result in a perfectly normal landing, however, at the higher ground speed. A low, long approach should be avoided at all costs. This is extremely dangerous, so make a normal approach, avoiding a long, low. Use the flaps as necessary, and you'll have a normal landing. Taking off from a high altitude mountain airport doesn't require any special technique, but the initial rate of climb will be much lower, and your ground speed will be a lot faster. This requires a little special planning for immediately after takeoff to avoid something that you can hit easily that would be no problem at a lower altitude airport. The best rate of climb speed should be really carefully observed, even though that's going to result in a much greater ground speed. So a little planning on where you're going to go after takeoff is very important. Now here's a prime example of a mountain airport located in a narrow valley with mountains close in on both sides. Here's where you need to know how to make a short field landing in a gusty wind. And if you make an error in judgment on approaching this airport, the only correction is to go around and try it again. And while you're making the approach to an airport like this, you want to keep in mind looking out for other airplanes because there might be some guy doing the same thing you are, only coming in from the other way and there's no radar contact at this airport. I've been here at this particular airport when the wind sock was blowing different directions on each end of this field. And the problem here is knowing how to handle the airplane at a slow speed in a gusty wind. Everybody can fly at cruising speed or faster. They can handle the airplane nicely on a 10,000 foot strip. But when it comes to a maximum performance short field landing in gusty air, as exemplified by this airport here. A little dual instruction from an experienced instructor on short field and slow flying techniques could be a lifesaver. One of the big problems here in Aspen is density altitude. In fact, the lack of knowledge of density altitude is probably the cause of more aircraft accidents in this area than any other single factor. We have a field elevation of 8,000 feet. In the summertime, our temperatures go up to perhaps 85 degrees in the middle of the day and this will radically affect aircraft performance. The use of mixture control is very important and you must lean out your engine, whether it's single or twin engine makes no difference, uh, for takeoff in order to get optimum performance. Being a resort community, we get a lot of people in who live at low altitudes and they just cannot believe how radically the airplane performance will be affected up here. Density altitude is simply the altitude of the air at the airport and this can be exceedingly high in hot temperatures and that's where the airplane thinks it's flying. At 14,000 feet, no one expects an airplane to climb rapidly or certainly not as rapidly as at sea level. Most pilots are familiar with their airplane performance at low altitudes and this performance is changed at high altitudes in thin air. The biggest difference in this performance is the reduced rate of climb and angle of climb at high altitude airports. The high density altitude will reduce the airplane performance drastically. Should I take off downhill, downwind, or should I take off uphill, upwind? You can only take off downhill because there's just no way that you can successfully take off uphill, upwind, on a one-way strip. And here it's very important to point out that almost never is it the gradient or the length of the runway, it's the terrain immediately after takeoff that makes it so important. That is the real deciding factor. The wheels will leave the ground. 